Hi there and welcome to the uh, Turning Point Prayer Blog from the 19th through the 25th of October uh, 2015. Uh, this is out there like we say every week just so we can pray as a church, we can connect in our private times, think of the things we need to pray for as the body of Christ and for those who are, are not part of our church but love to pray for us and be a uh, partner with us in what God's doing then it's a chance then to connect in and, and pray along the lines um, that we need God to move in, uh, particularly this week. Obviously this is not exhaustive so if we feel God saying things outside of that then just feel free uh, just to just to pray into those areas. Um, you know, prayer and interceding for the life of the church and for one another is really vital. In fact, without prayer, nothing happens. Um, C.H. Spurgeon famously said, a church that doesn't pray is dead. Uh, and I think we could translate that into Christians who don't pray. Uh, their spiritual life really struggles because it's about relationship with the Father. It's about engaging him and encountering him uh, and spending time with him. It, sometimes our walk looks a bit like... Uh, a married couple who sit in a room and don't talk to one another um, and sit there night after night and then wonder why things are going slightly wrong. And then when it, we're saying with our spiritual lives that sometimes we don't pray and don't stop. Don't take those moments, don't listen to the voice uh, of God and as we open his word and in our private times together in, as twos and threes and as family maybe uh, and as church family and family groups, you know, these are important times. These are times when we don't just come before God and talk we also get a chance to listen and allow him to impart and change us in those times and sometimes that might be noisy and sometimes that might be quiet and it, there's no set formula it's about intentionality it's about building relationship and it's about growing in our faith with Christ so with that I just want to give us some things to think about over the next week uh, first I just want to be thankful you know we prayed for Last week uh, for Amara's dedication with a family and friends that are coming. And we're just really praying that what happened yesterday and the way God moved that he continues to touch those people that he laid seeds in hearts that will uh, produce and germinate great fruit in the right season and moment. No one was there by chance. No one was there by accident. It's part of God's elective purpose that they heard what he had for them and the way he wanted to connect. And we might just be part of that story in their walk to salvation but we're believing that each person that came who doesn't know Christ will know Christ that they will have an encounter with the living God just like we did so uh, keep praying uh, for those members of friends and, and family let's not forget them let's you know come before the Lord and stand with Liz and Stan and their family and praying that their family and friends who don't yet know Christ come to a relationship with him uh, through the power of his spirit touching them and speaking what is dead into life. So just some things uh, thinking about this week. It's the prayer and fasting week. If you didn't sign up, it doesn't matter. You can still pray and fast. So you need to pick a day between now and Sunday and take that time out and fast. Uh, that means stay away from food. Uh, you can drink water, have a cup of tea if you want to, uh, but everything else, uh, the way we like, I think we like to do it, is that we stay away from that stuff. We switch off maybe some of the distractions, the Facebook, the telly, and we spend that time praying for intentionally praying for uh the church and for one another and for ourselves and our family and the deepening in our spirituality and our growth with christ the things i'd like us to really focus on uh this week is that uh, as we've been saying we're coming up to january 2016 we're thinking through the vision uh for next year and what god has on his heart for us i've spent some time out today with our pastor adesio uh, from brazil we spent some time walking and praying and in those silent times when we couldn't communicate because language is a uh, serious problem, that actually I really felt God just put a few things in my heart and just start to crystallize things. But we're nowhere near there yet. That's just a small part of what we think God's calling us to for the coming year. So keep praying, keep asking God uh, to speak to us, to speak to you. And if God says something, then please get in contact. Um, let us know so we can weigh that up as elders like the same as whatever God says to me, we'll take it to the elders and we'll weigh it up together to see if this is of the Lord's doing. You know, the book of Psalms says this, if the Lord doesn't build the house, then the builders labour in vain. And we don't want people that labour in vain. We want to be people who labour with kingdom intentionality as a part of his mission. So please keep praying for that. Pray for protection. Uh, God is on the move. Exciting things are happening. We shared a little bit yesterday of what God uh, is beginning to do. We really, really need to pray for protection. Uh, some of us don't realise it, but the battle is hot and the fire is intense and it's going to 
become more because we're going to step out and we're going to rattle some cages and we're going to see people set free and we're going to pull treasures out of darkness and we're going to see God rescue and redeem lives and once he's his salvation started in them we're going to work with him through the work of the spirit seeing then become all that God has called them to be and the enemy hates it he wants to destroy it destroy us destroy those who have responsibility and lead over us so pray for them pray with all your heart pray for my family pray for your family group leaders James uh, and Bob as well pray for those who lead worship Sunday school every area pray for protection and pray for each other uh, as the spirit leads you over uh, the next week on the prayer and fasting thing you see because once God gives us uh, a vision and um we, for next year we start running with it we then have a response we have to act we looked at this yesterday in the book of hebrews linking to numbers 13 and 14 they all saw the same thing yet joshua and caleb are the two that acted by faith and it's never about disobeying your leaders as in james me and bob uh, because jesus are great and moses and to look carry that through when god gives us a vision as a church our lack of response comes to him and to him alone and we need to respond well and faithfully with our time our talent and our treasure and all three things are going to be have a demand on us uh, and we need God to refresh and restore us in those areas also on Saturday is the YMCA 24-7 prayer that Jez is running it's being held in the Westover uh, Centre if you want more information get hold of Jez come for an hour and spend time praying uh, for the work they do there pray for Jez and his amazing, unique opportunity in the gospel that he has to be a light for Christ, to be someone that people who are broken and are damaged, who may never step through the door of a church, want to talk to. And we need to pray for wisdom for him and pray for equipping that he can be the arms of Jesus, the words of Jesus, and speak the life of Jesus into those situations. So please get involved and pray. Coming this Sunday is part of the meeting. Uh, Team Challenger coming to share about their work and maybe how we can get involved uh, as we think through coming up to next year. But they're just going to just talk us about through some of their stuff they do and it gives us a chance to pray for them and just commit them to the Lord. So they're going to come Sunday and take a 15-minute slot in our service. So pray, pray for them as they come, uh, that they'll also be blessed uh, as they spend time with us on Sunday. Continue to pray for Love Boscombe. We had a launch on Wednesday. There's exciting things happening. If you're not signed up for stuff, then get hold of us. We want to see as many people mobilised for the cause of the gospel as humanly possible because the fields are white unto harvest. The labourers are few. England is hard. It's no harder than anywhere else. There is a harvest out there that need to hear, and they hear because we go. And Jesus loves to use us in his great plan of salvation. So we need to respond in faith and get out there and be a part of of what he's doing talking about responding in faith i felt really challenged uh, over the weekend uh, just to lift our heads a, a little bit in what god is doing amongst us at turning point and um, for weeks now we've been putting 50 chairs out uh, they haven't been quite full uh, sometimes more than others but we want to put 60 chairs out every week like was out this sunday and we want to pray each one of us that god to fill the empty chair next to us uh, that we would bring people in and God would lead people in as well, that these chairs would be full and we would see that God works salvation in lives and in families and, and also that will help them be grow and restored in the gospel to become disciples and followers of Jesus. So when you come in on Sunday and you see that chair next to you, just start beginning to pray. We're going to take time out every Sunday just to pray for the empty chair next to us uh, on the run up to uh, January. Uh, I really believe with all my heart we can see those chairs, not just full of people, full of people responding to the gospel, being changed by his power. I really believe God wants to start doing things, calling some of the prodigals home as James has been sharing as he's felt the Lord has laid on his heart and seeing new life. Uh, and we need to be intentional, inviting our friends, inviting our family praying for them like really really praying for them uh, asking god to meet them asking god to soften their hearts giving us opportunities that they may come and taste and see how great our god is after all we've tasted it we have felt it we've experienced it and why should we want to keep it uh, so uh, keep praying keep pushing in pray for one another love one another you know, we annoy one another at times and that's always going to happen but love overlooks a multitude of things and uh, Part of what God wants to do with us is always cause us to, to love like he loves. Uh, and not love because people do what we want, how they want, when we want, but love when they quite don't do it those ways. Uh, because love that Christ calls us to is unconditional. And as we 
show that sort of love and we overlook things and we forgive. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't challenge and talk about, but we have grace in our hearts that actually in that we also receive grace. Because um, too often I think as Christians we expect mercy and demand judgment and justice. And actually God gave us mercy and wants us to be agents of mercy also. So God bless you. Have a great week. Plug in, pray hard and believe uh, for God to do amazing things in our midst.